Dear students, now we are going to discuss traveling wave tube amplifier and its operation in detail. Traveling wave tube amplifier, simply called as TWTA, is a high power broadband microwave amplifier. It is a special type of vacuum tube that uses a non resonant slow wave structure for its operation. Non resonant slow wave structure means it is skeletal structure, okay? Here the amplification can be done through continuous interaction between an electron beam and the input RF signal over the entire length of the tube. Here the operating frequency is ranging from 300 MHz to 50 GHz. Okay? This is the structure of traveling wave tube amplifier. It consists of an electron gun from this cathode, anode plate, Magnet surrounding this tube. This is the chemical structure. There is an attenuator as a part of this chemical structure just before the end of this tube and then the collector. So here this collector is a positive one which can receive all the electrons from this tube. Do you all understand? So this is the overall structure here. We are going to give the negative potential to this cathode as well as to this anode. Okay, here the electron gun is used to emit an electron beam with a uniform velocity towards this tube. This anode plate is mainly used to focus the beam inside this tube and also increases the velocity because this anode is also negative, electron beam is also negative. It can accelerate this electron beam and increases its velocity, okay. So next, the magnet surrounding this tube. Here this magnet is mainly used to produce an axial magnetic field to prevent the spreading of that electron beam. Okay, so here the electrons may be spreading out of this tube that can be controlled by providing this axial magnetic field. This one is slow wave structure that is the chemical structure. So here the RF input signal is given at one end of this chemical structure and we can take that amplified output at the another end of this chemical structure, okay. So here the input RF signal produces an electric field at the center of this chemical with the velocity of light. Here the velocity of this electromagnetic wave is higher than the phase velocity of the electric beam. Okay, there is a mismatch between the velocities of this two RF input as well as electron B. So we have to reduce the velocity of this electromagnetic field by multiplying that field with the ratio of the skeletal parameters. Okay, and the attenuator. So here the attenuator is mainly used to attenuate any reflected wave from the end of this tube towards this electron gun. If there is any reflection means it can generate some noises okay or there may be some oscillation. So in order to avoid such kind of oscillations we can use this attenuator. So if there is any reflection it can be absorbed by this attenuator okay. So here the collector it is a positive potential which is going to receive all the electrons from this tube. Gain control voltage is used to adjust the gain of the traveling wave tube amplifier based on that application. So, okay. This is the overview of this traveling wave tube amplifier. Next we are going to discuss the working principle of this TWTA. So, how the amplification process can be done in this tube. So, here we are giving an electron beam with uniform velocity inside this tube and also giving RF input signal. So whichever electrons crossing the positive half cycle of this RF signal that can be accelerated that is moving faster. So whichever electrons crossing the negative half cycle of this input signal those electrons can be decelerated that means moving slower. So there is a velocity modulation at this part. Do you all understand that? The velocity modulated bunch electrons can continuously interact with the wave propagating inside this chemical structure. Due to this continuous interaction, 
the electrons which are moving with high velocity can transfer their energy to the wave inside this tube. So here we can increase the amplitude of the wave that is the amplification process. Due to chemical structure, the wave propagates a much larger distance. Instead of a straight line, it is a chemical. So it can travel a longer distance. Then we can increase the amplitude to a desirable range. Do you all understand? So speed of the wave depends on the number of turns used in this chemical structure. Do you all understand the concept? Here TWTA consists of an electron gun, anode plate, slow wave structure, magnet, attenuator and collector. Let's discuss the operation of each component here. An electron gun emits an electron beam with uniform velocity towards the tube. Anode plate is used to focus the beam inside the tube and also increases the velocity of the beam. Magnet produces an axial magnetic field to prevent the spreading of that electron beam out of that tube. So here that RF input signal is given to one end of the calyx structure and the output is taken at the other end of the calyx structure. So why do we go for this calyx structure in TWTA means here? The input RF field produces an electric field at the center of the calyx with the velocity of light. That is high velocity when compared with the electron beam phase velocity. Okay. So in order to compensate that, we have to reduce the velocity of this RF field by multiplying it with the ratio of calyx pitch to calyx circumference. So this is the reduced velocity of the RF field. Here the velocity of light is multiplied with the ratio of calyx pitch that is the pitch angle divided by 2 pi r that is circumference of that calyx okay. So next use of that attenuator here it is mainly used to attenuate any reflected waves due to impedance mismatch at the end of the tube. If there is any mismatch means there may be some reflection it may produce some oscillation inside the tube. So we need to avoid such kind of oscillations, right? For that we can use the attenuator in order to restrict the generation of unwanted oscillations inside the tube. It is placed over the part of the calyx near the output end, okay? So let's take an overview of this working principle here. So during positive half cycle of this RF field, the moving electron beam accelerates. That means whichever electrons crossing this positive half cycle those can be accelerated that is moving faster. So whichever electrons crossing the negative half cycle of this RF field, those electrons can be decelerated that means moving slower. So the variation in this electron velocity is known as velocity modulation. The velocity modulated bunched electrons can interact with the RF field inside the calyx structure. So due to this continuous interaction, the high velocity electrons can induce its kinetic energy to that RF field. Okay, so this growing amplitude of that wave causes more bunching electrons which increases the amplitude of the wave. Okay, then the amplified RF output can be obtained at the end of the tube. Due to chemical structure, the wave propagates a longer distance. By that way, we can increase that amplitude to the desired level. Okay. So here that amplitude as well as the speed of the wave depends on the number of turns in that calyx structure. If you are going to increase that number of turns in the calyx structure, we can increase that amplification factor also. Next characteristics of TWTA, bandwidth is 0.8 gigahertz range, efficiency is about 20 to 40 percentage, output power is up to 10 kilowatt, frequency range is 3 gigahertz and above. Power gain is about 60 dB, okay. So the major advantages of this TWTA over the Clayston amplifier are given here. It has wide bandwidth, high gain and reliability, high output power, okay. Next applications of traveling wave tube amplifier. It is used in continuous wave radar systems. It is used as broadband receivers for RF amplification. It is used in satellite transponders to get high output power, okay. It is also used in wideband communication links, troposcatter links, etc., okay.